All right, so again, real quick, let's run through. Um, fat cat, what's that mean? Cathode. Cathode, Cathode. Cathode right. So if you have a uh, galvanic cell, let's go to page. It's the next chapter, chapter 18. Page 819. Page 819. Everybody on page 819? I want you to follow here. Okay. So uh, there's a galvanic cell. And uh, if you see the zinc anode and the copper cathode, look at the little uh, captions there. Notice how the zinc atoms are popping off, going into solution, becoming zinc ions. But if you look at the copper cathode on the right, the copper ions from solution are jumping on to the metal and forming metal atoms, so it gains mass. So I would say fat cat cathode gains mass, where that anode is going to lose mass over time. So essentially, in a battery, right, that's, a, that's what a battery does, same concept. The battery runs out when what happens? When the, right, when the anode is depleted, when it has no more electrons to, to release, um, and, it, and there's no mass left to it, essentially. Yeah. Is it possible, as they did in Breaking Bad, to jumpstart a man using this? You, you would need a lot of them. No, they use a big crank. Yeah, but they do this reaction. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How would it work? Like, you have the batteries that like, you can charge. Is that just reversal of reaction? Yes, exactly. So, uh, we're going to talk about that because, sure. stay with me, because in batteries and in these cells, they're basically working in one direction. Um, and it's a spontaneous change. So if you set this up, it will work on its own. In other words, the zinc will naturally lose electrons, copper will gain it because of the electrochemical reaction going on. It's spontaneous, so delta G would be negative. But if you have a rechargeable battery, when you give it energy, then it reverses it, so it flips it, delta G becomes positive, and you're going back towards the reactant scenario. It's kind of like an equilibrium situation. So yeah, if they're reversible. Um, but... Um, you can only do that so many times. Yeah. And eventually, so you can't just keep right. Eventually, because I, I I actually don't know specifically why, but I can kind of make an educational guess that the anode won't be fully replenished every time. So some of it will be just depleted. Like to ask, like the battery like, like slowly yeah. Yep. Slowly. Um, so um, so anyways, that that's uh, the one thing I want to show you there. And um, where's uh, oxidation occur? What's that phrase? Yeah. All right, lose electrons, oxidize, gain electron, reduce, right? Yeah. So zinc is oxidized. Right, zinc is oxidized. Anox, and then red cat, cathode is reduced, right? So again, all these little tricks will really help you with certain things. Um, so uh, I just wanted to kind of show you a picture of that. But before we actually get into the galvanic cells, let's real quick um, review uh, just um, a re redox reaction, like what it looks like, and then writing half reaction. You guys remember half reaction? <laughs> Okay, lots of fun. Uh, we'll start out with something simple. Um, Do you need the picture anymore? No, you don't need the picture anymore. Let's do, uh, let's do this one. We put zinc metal in concentrated hydrochloric acid, and then we bubble it through soapy water and light it on fire. That's fun. Let's do it that. Yes. What's that? Hydrogen. Yes. So what's the uh, products here? Hydrogen gas and? ZNCL2. Right, ZNCL2, zinc chloride solution, and hydrogen gas. So we got to balance it. So I think you just need a two in front of the HCl. So how do we know this is a redox reaction? It's the zinc change in charge. Change in charge, right. So let's label these. Zero, plus one, minus one, plus two, minus one, and zero. So we notice that there are changes in the charges. Therefore, it's redox. <laughs> Which one doesn't change? CL. Yeah, so it doesn't undergo any electron transfer. <laughs> so let's write our two half reactions. The half reaction, so we'll do oxidation first. And we'll do reduction. And again, apparently you don't need to know uh, reduction uh, agents or oxidation agents. So I'll go through it, but you don't need to know it. No, wait. I mean, I understand. It says in the book... A little Bible thing there I refer to all the time. It says, understanding reducing agents and oxidizing agents doesn't, doesn't help the student, doesn't allow the student to have a deeper understanding of the material. 
And it's true. Because if you understand which one is oxidized and reduced, that's that's what you need to know. Whether you how you word it or phrase it, that's kind of irrelevant. So I kind of agree with that. But back to this. Who gets oxidized, who gets reduced? And when I say who, I mean a reactant. Okay, so which one of these, the H or the Zn, H plus or Zn zero, which one is the Leo? Lose electrons. Zn. Right. So Zn zero loses electrons and becomes Zn plus two. Well, who gains them? It's got to be the one that's reduced, right? So there's your GER. So the H plus, there's two of them, two H plus, gain an electron, gain electrons, gain two of them, and become H2 zero. So the, um, the uh, two H plus ions gain those two, the, the zinc uh, metal zero loses those two, and that's the transfer of electrons. And that's why it's called redox. And again, oxidation, your charge will always increase because you're losing negative charges. Reduction, your charge will always decrease because you're gaining negative charges. All right, so that was just a quick review. Questions? So you got to make sure, you know, the little acronyms, you got all that down. Understand how to label charges, how to write half reactions, and, and we're good to, to move forward. No questions. Okay. All right, so we'll start talking about galvanic cells. Do galvanic cells produce energy or use it? Produce. Produce it, right. So they're converting what to what? Chemical, Chemical energy to electrical energy. So galvanic cells. All right, All right. so um, let's see here. Converts chemical into electrical. Um, let's, let's sketch one in our notes here. You got a solution here, solution here. What's that thing called? Salt bridge. Salt bridge, right. And we'll hook this up to a uh, voltmeter, maybe. So it's just basically just condensed down to like actual batteries. Yeah. Um, what's the salt bridge do? Transfer of ions. Transfer of ions, right. So this is called the salt bridge. Salt bridge. Um, I guess we'll just use that same one from the book. Let's say this is Zn. Let's say this is Cu. Electrons are always going... Oh, this is something I didn't mention yesterday. Electrons are always going from the anode to the cathode, zinc to Cu. Um, so here's the anode. Here's the cathode. Um, in the solution, I have zinc sulfate. So this is uh, Zn, SO4, Aq. This is CuSO4 Aq. Um, did I label my salt bridge? Yeah. I put K plus in here, going this way. Cl minus, I got going that way. So try and draw yours very similar if you can. If you have room in your bridge, I didn't really tell you to make it big enough. Um, there's a couple things we're going to write about the galvanic cell. More things than I mentioned yesterday. Um, so, the uh, actually, you know what? Let's do this. Coming off this bar, let's put an arrow Zn plus two. And then over here, I have a Cu plus two with an arrow going onto the bar. I, I didn't tell you to make these big. I hope you did. <laughs> so you can label all these things. Um, I'm just cramming it in. It's all right, cram it in. That's fine. I think I'm good. Um, so, yeah, as the zinc loses electrons, it turns into Zn plus 2, and as the copper gains electrons, it turns into Cu0. So what we're going to write is electrons always flow, always flow from anode to cathode, which makes sense because the anode is the one that's losing all of them. The cathode is the one gaining, right? Here's our Leo. This is our oxidation over here. Here's our GER. Here's our reduction over here. So, of course, they're gaining and they're losing. Electrons always flow from anode to cathode, which is why this loses mass and this gains mass, right? So this is going to lose mass. I keep adding more things. This gains mass. So if we were to, to really look at the, ox the half reaction in here, it would be, uh, so I guess we can write that here, the oxidation half reaction looks like this, Zn 
turning to Zn plus 2, plus 2 electrons, and then the reduction half reaction would be Cu plus 2, gaining those two electrons in solution, turning into Cu solid. That's, so this is happening here, this is happening inside that solution. Yeah. Will the salt work? Does it like matter what salt you use? Nope. Any salt will work? Any salt will work. Good question. How does this salt work? Probably the, the more inert, the better. In other words, K and Cl aren't going to react with anything. K plus CL minus. So, so what, if, what if you use like? Well, like something that would <laughs> precipitate with zinc or CU is probably not going to be a good choice. Well, so Agber well, would not be a good choice. It, wouldn't that, it, wouldn't wouldn't it, still be, below the it would work. I was going to say, wouldn't it still work, but then it just you can't reverse it? It's just going to interfere because you don't want to take copper ions out of here and precipitate them. You want them to form on oh, the cathode. Like so. Isn't copper more reactive than silver? So wouldn't silver keep the... Wouldn't copper in the cathode continue to bond? So if you're saying you have Cl minus ions in here? No, I'm saying if you have Ag plus or Au plus because they're more, they're less reactive. Well, so they will displace the copper in the solution, so the cathode. No, I, it it would not. I don't think. I think we're just complicating it, but I think, I think you're probably right. So, uh, but the other thought I just had is actually the negative ions are never going to go into here. Why? There's the last thing I wanted to write here. <coughs> anions always migrate to the anode. Anions migrate to the anode. I'm out of room here. The cations go to the cathode. I'm going to squeeze that in here. The cations, that's why I drew it that way. Cl minus going over here, K plus going over there. Cations migrate to the cathode. And that has a lot to do with the... Uh, uh, electron transfer um, and the, uh, the charge. But again, that's something we really don't need to know. The charge on here is actually negative. The charge on here is actually positive. But we don't have to memorize that according to the AP Bible. So, um, so in a car battery, your black electrode would be your anode. The red one would be the cathode. If you open it up and looked at the two, usually they're color coded black and red. I think what else? I think that's the gist of all of the parts you need to know and what's happening. So there is kind of a lot, but it's kind of a review. There's nothing really new for AP yet. We'll get there. Um, but as far as labeling it and understanding, the ions flow through here. Where are the ions going? Anions going here, cations going here, electrons going through the voltmeter or through the battery. I mean, battery, through the light, whatever, whatever it is. Um, anox, red cat, which gains, which loses mass. Can you write the half reactions in the solutions? What's the sulfate in there for? Why, why is there a zinc sulfate solution and copper sulfate? Yeah, you just because you can't just put zinc metal and then have it turn into zinc ions. You gotta have a compound, right? So you need something to dissolve to get the zinc ions and copper ions in there. Um, so uh, yeah, that's it. That's the gist of the overview there. Oh, I'm out of time. So um, that's a galvanic cell. I guess, oh, I do have homework. I almost forgot. You guys almost slipped out unscathed. Two worksheets. It is better than buffer. What is this paper that he gives, by the way? Keep those. We'll get to those. Oh, yeah, I, gotta, I also have to give you your reactions.